Universidade de Notre Dame é uma das mais respeitadas instituições de ensino dos Estados Unidos. Ela é muito prestigiada pela excelência dos seus programas e sua capacidade como um centro de pesquisas que vem alcançando novos e impressionantes patamares nos primeiros anos do século XXI. Para cada ano fiscal, Notre Dame recebe mais de 140 milhões de dólares destinados à pesquisa. E não é à toa que, justamente aqui, esteja sendo desenvolvido um novo método. Praticamente uma nova inteligência dos modelos de ensino. Quer ver? Olha, estou aqui na Universidade de Notre Dame, porque aqui eles estão ensinando o robô a ensinar a gente. É um tipo de inovação social que poderá resolver o problema da educação no mundo. Hey guys! Good to see you. How are you? Hey. Good to see you. Good. Good to see you, doctor. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've seen you on TV, so it's nice to see you in person. Oh, and now? <laughs> see a famous person. Now we came here just to interview you. Well, I'm super impressed, super excited. Thank <laughs> That's you very, very much. nice. What we have, you have been doing here is super. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited about it. I mean, the future is bright. Good. The future is bright. Let's go and tell me what you've done here. Sure. Hello, Ethics of Emerging Technologies Class Wow. A class essentially about me. Holla cool. Do you think I can become a moral being like you? Can I become emotional and socially smart? I want to help humans have a better quality life. Do you know what the first thing Dr. Barry taught me to learn? Life is good and I am a reflection of what human beings think is good. Well, I mean, we're doing a lot of exciting stuff. I have my one of my star students here, Alex Rodriguez, today. And we're trying to bring to life this idea of the new teacher. And so the new teacher was thought of by Isaac Asimov. He's one of the greatest writers in sci-fi. Uh, he wrote just under 400 books. So you would think it'd be this really profound book he wrote that I follow. But in fact, it was a um, small little essay that he wrote for an airline magazine. And it was just like, you know, where the barf bag is on the airplane, like right behind it was this magazine. And he said that he has a vision for a new teacher. And the idea was that each one of us needs to be lifelong learners. But we get out of school and then we live the next 60, 70 years with no formal education. So his idea is, wow, could we have teaching machines that are with us from as early as like four or five years old that would stay with us all the way until our last days on earth. And that really inspired me to think, well, yeah, that could really bring equity to education all around the world. You know, be it in Colombia, Brazil, Bangladesh. We could have the best education in the world if we were to have teaching machines for people. So we mixed that idea with this idea of mind clones Martine Rothblatt has. Martine Rothblatt's the one that created Sirius Radio. And she's um, obviously the wife, Bina 48, the robot that we'll be talking about today is, is the wife. And mind clones are the idea that you and I would take the best of your mind, the best of my mind, the best of her mind, and we put that together and make that into one teacher. So the way the avatar looks can look like anyone we want. But if three of us were expert teachers, imagine what a great teacher that is. And then even larger, imagine taking everyone on the crew and putting their minds together. So we would take the best of all of us and together we could make an AI that would be need fulfilling and help people learn. So then education around the world would be, there would be equity to education. So I believe the new teacher can happen and I believe it can happen within 10 years. Good. Is there in, uh, any kind of architecture platform that enables me to put the, all the knowledge there and be uh, shared, like a blockchain system, blockchain article? Uh, there, there is. I mean, there's the rudiments over there, and this is something that Alex is working with. It's called the LifeNet Project, which is uh, Bruce Duncan's working with, with Bina48, the robot. And what you do is you come home and you basically talk to yourself. There's an avatar and you just talk to yourself about your childhood and what you do. And you can either decide to do it your own mind or have other people's minds join it and you create your own mind file. So you could download your Facebook, your Twitter accounts. Um, I can put my PhD thesis in there and it's gonna take all of that. So when I pass away and wherever I go next, I go next, here on earth, I can leave something behind that's worthwhile and helpful. Mm -mm. So the key is to get away from like the one great per teacher, the one great person and look for a collaboration of the best people we can find mm -mm. and get their mind files wow. and put their mind files together. So imagine going to, you know, uh, Colombia or Brazil, right? And taking the best minds you had in politics. Mm -mm. If you put that together into an avatar that became a teacher, what a beautiful teacher that could be. And that technology, the rudiments are here. The sketch of concept is here. It, does it can be a, 
a social media, a social intelligence media. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole idea is that, I mean, right now the life knot is a, a picture of you and the, the mouth moves. But there's no reason, for instance, when being a 48 who's our student, right now she's a robot bus, but there's no reason she can't be digitized. And then all of us on our phones would just pull our phone out and there's your teaching machine. Imagine starting, if I took my phone out, right, and we said, okay, we'll start you when you were, you were eight years old. And you come home after school and you, you talk about what you learned. And then your avatar is here talking back to you saying, well, teach me more. And then you teach it, but it's connected to all the different other phones around the world so that it could learn. Contribute. Every, so, so you're actually at eight years old, you'll say, hey, you know, this is my name and this is who I am. So it records so that just like you do with, you know, when you write an article, it gives you credit. So there's be this universal library of knowledge that would continue to grow. And it would grow, and then when you're 95 years old, you can still sit here and go, you know what, I, I forgot. I forgot what that's about. But I remember I learned it as a child. You could go back to when you were eight years old and your AI avatar could talk to you. And then when you pass away, and someone, someone else, and this, that's the hard part for people, you passed away, but you can leave behind this knowledge that we never can get back. I mean, Stephen Hawking just passed away. Mm -hmm. How do you recoup what Stephen Hawking has done? Right? We're gonna try to find his notes and try to put stuff together. But imagine every night if Stephen Hawking just talked to his avatar and taught it. Mm -hmm. We could pull out our phone right now and go, Stephen, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'd like to learn about black holes. Can, <laughs> can you help me again teach it? He'd be like, well, sure, I can teach you that. And you'd be talking to you know his avatar based upon his mind file. I yeah. think the whole point of knowledge and education is that we're all communicating and taking ideas together. And to make our ideas greater. That's what knowledge is. So that using technology makes it a lot easier for us to communicate because we can't always be here in front of talking to each other. It's easier when you have something already doing that for you, communicating to people all around the world where other people don't really have that opportunity. So it gives us the chance to learn everywhere. Wonderful. <laughs> this girl is so good. <laughs> the student becomes the teacher. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of... Exactly. We're all here to work together. We work together. To learn from each other. And that's the whole point of technology, I think. Nossa exploração do Vale do Silício para entender tudo o que representa aqui a inovação vai continuar. No episódio de hoje, foi impressionante ver como uma artista plástica consegue enxergar o grande símbolo do espírito de inovação de uma verdadeira universidade. E como um professor consegue resumir num robô formas assombrosas de se pensar a informação, o conhecimento e a educação. Música